documented information plays a crucial role when trying to implement an ISMS according to ISO 27001. This aspect is extremely important and oftentimes overlooked. This is why we'll have a look at the requirements of Chapter 7.5 before discussing anything else. ISO 27001 in the 2013 revision has been around for almost 10 years, which is why we'll try to incorporate the, let's say, old version and the new 2022 version within this course. Here you can see a mind map featuring the 2013 revision with the subclauses of 7.5 highlighted in blue. Um, 7.5 is part of clause 7, which is all about supporting factors for the ISMS. Compared to the 2013 revision, nothing has changed in terms of the structure of chapter 7.5. There are still three subclauses, 7.5.1 general, 7.5.2 creating and updating, and 7.5.3 control of documented information. In the next couple of minutes, we're going to have a look at each of these subclauses and learn what are the requirements, what these requirements imply, and how to implement the required activities. In other words, we are going to answer the questions on what needs to be done, why does it have to be done, and how can it be done. Please note that I can only provide you with guidance on how to implement certain requirements. In the end, it depends on the type and nature of your organization. But I try to keep my implementation guidance as generic as possible. Alright, so let's begin with 7.5.1 General. The required activity is the organization includes documented information in the ISMS as directly required by ISO 27001 as well as determined by the organization as being necessary for the effectiveness of the ISMS. Now what does that mean? Documented information is crucial to provide evidence on compliance with legal and compliance requirements. That's why documented information plays a huge role in management system standards like ISO 27001. For now, let's just be aware of policies as a formal expression of the intentions and directions of an organization. In other words, policies are to tell you what and how things need to be done. Records is data saved for later reference, for example, something like a receipt that provides, that proves a transaction was made. Documented information is also crucial for audits of the ISMS and to maintain a stable ISMS when decision makers leave the organization or switch roles. Um, the amount of documented information needed depends mostly on the size of the organization. Without documented information, a comprehensive performance evaluation as required by Clause 9 would be impossible to be carried out. To sum it up, ISO 27001 distinguishes between a set of mandatory documented information and additional documented information that is only required if it is determined as necessary for the effectiveness of the ISMS. At this point, you might be thinking, this is way too theoretical. What am I supposed to do here? Um, in the end, it's quite simple. Organizations should determine what documented information is necessary for ensuring effectiveness of its ISMS in addition to mandatory documented information as required by ISO 27001. To make things a little easier, Throughout ISO 27001, you will find a set of requirements specifically on documented information. On this slide, you can see all the mandatory documented information and their corresponding clauses and subclauses. So, if we have a look at Chapter 4, which is about the context of the organization, then we can see that in subclause 4.3, determining the scope of the ISMS, the standard requires us to generate a piece of documented information. In this case, it's the scope of the ISMS. Um, this is something that we will discuss later on in that course, but for now, just be aware of the fact that throughout the standard, you will be mandated to um, generate, create, and so on, pieces of information. So another example is the information security policy as required by subclass 5.2. Um, in terms of the risk management process, um, we will be um, mandated to, um, to create a process for the assessment of information security risks, as well as for the treatment of information security risks. Um, there are things like information security objectives that have to be available um, as documented information, evidence of competence, um, certain results um, for... Um, 
let's say, the successful um, implementation of these processes, but also things like audit programs, audit results, results of management reviews, and so on and so on. Um, you can find uh, lists on mandatory and optional documented information in the resource section of this lecture. So no need to figuring out all by yourself, but it definitely helps to uh, familiarize yourself with the standard and learn what is the mandatory documented information. Next up, let's have a look at 7.5.2, uh, creating and updating. So we'll stick to that structure as presented before, and we'll begin with the required activity. Um, the requirement here is when creating and updating documented information, the organization ensures its appropriate identification and description, format, and media, and review, and approval. Pooh. Again, very theoretical, but let's see. Let's try to figure out what that means. Um, documented information needs a structure. Therefore, organizations should define a suitable documentation approach that ensures documented information is handled in the same way across the entire organization. Um, review and approval by appropriate management is necessary to make sure that documented information is correct and suitable for the purpose. It should also regularly be reviewed so that it remains suitable and adequate. So I'm assuming that from your work experience, um, you've probably encountered um, certain situations where things had to be approved by your manager, for example, or things that you've been working on and you needed um, a final approval by, something, by somebody else. And this is exactly what it's about. So um, certain decisions, certain um, final steps have to be carried out by someone who is in charge of things and who can give a formal review and approval for these types of information. Okay, so let's see how we can um, implement that in practice. Um, I prepared a little document here. Um, this document is a piece of documented information, of course. Um, it has a title and um, we have several metadata that further describe um, the document. So, for example, uh, this is a document of the type policy. The current version is 1.2. Um, the date of version is uh, July 1st, 2022. It was created by John Doe and it was approved by Michael Roberts. Um, the status of the document is, um, is it is approved, so it's not in a draft or in review status. And it even has a classification this case, it's a confidential piece of information, which is something we will learn about when we're talking about control A.8. And um, here we also have a revision history that tells us exactly what changes have been, weighed, have been made by whom. And um, these information should always be inherent to every piece of information within an organization. So it could be something as simple as this document but it could also be implemented in some sort of database or document library where um, it's where no manual efforts are needed, where this could be carried out by a system, for example. But in the end, when you think about the creating and updating of um, documented information, then it's basically about um, having these types of metadata um, that help to um, track changes and to make sure that um, document and inf documented information follows the approval process. All right, so next up we have um, chapter subclause 7.5.3, which is about the control of documented information. All right, so 7.5.3 requires organizations to manage documented information throughout its life cycle and make it available where and when needed. So this subclause of ISO 27001 is about how documented information is controlled. That means documented information has to be communicated to its intended audience and it has to be available where and when it's needed. In addition, throughout the whole life cycle, the integrity, confidentiality and relevance has to be ensured. Now, if you think for a moment, then hopefully the CIA triad comes to your mind. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability are the so-called security objectives and represent a key concept of information security. In the end, this is why such things as ISO 27001 are out there. 
The implementation of that requirement is pretty straightforward. We need a system that allows us to distribute the information within the organization. The distribution should comply with any requirements related to protecting and handling of classified information. Because not all information is intended for everyone, such a system needs some sort of access control so we can grant and remove access rights whenever necessary. A change management process ensures that only authorized persons with approval rights are capable of making changes to documented information. At the end of its life cycle, documented information needs to be retained. Um, this is why organizations should establish an appropriate retention period for documented information in accordance to its intended validity and other relevant requirements. So in the screenshot on the left side, um, I provide you with a simple um, view on a SharePoint um, with a document library in specific. So here you can store um, documented information. We can even see some um, metadata on the right hand side, which uh, would uh, probably fulfill the requirements of 7.5.2. So we can definitely tell when um, the, the document or the information was last modified. There's probably an entire revision history, a, a change log in the background. And um, so this is a, a modern solution for, let's say, the implementation of this, um, of this requirement. But um, documented information is not necessarily available only in digital form. It can also be around an analog uh, form. So if you think about um, paper files, for example, um, they are probably a little outdated, but I mean, most organizations are still um, extremely reliant on their paper files. So this type of information also needs to be classified. It needs to have these uh, metadata on it. And of course, it has to be controlled. Um, in this case, it would not be a digital system, but maybe it would be like a file system, a closet with certain drawers, and so on and so on. So I hope this made it a little clearer on what document the information is all about. And this allows us to finally start with the implementation project and get things going.